My name is Wolfgang Honninger. I'm the director of the Department of Urology, Innsbruck Medical University. The department consists of two adult wards, each 27 beds, and of one pediatric urology ward. Also within the department, there are three scientific labs, and they are mainly dealing with prostate cancer and cancer immunology. Within the department, we have the European Prostate Cancer Center. Uh, within this uh, center, we can offer all diagnostic, all therapeutic modalities which are internationally available to date. With high quality diagnosis, with high quality therapy, we try to reduce overdiagnosis, overtreatment, and we also try to reduce the side effects of surgery and of radiation therapy to a minimum. To develop a new surgical techniques, at the one hand you need good theoretical background in a center of academic excellence, on the other hand you need good um, infrastructure in terms of patient workup, diagnosis, treatment, operative surgery and then follow-up. And um, Innsbruck Urology gave us the possibility to develop new techniques above the established techniques. We were able to revolutionize male incontinent surgery, developing a new male sling for post-prostatectomy incontinence. We are focused here on uh, the resistance to chemotherapy in prostate cancer. Uh, chemotherapy is normally used uh, in prostate cancer after endocrine therapy. However, unfortunately, the duration of effects of this therapy is uh, rather short. For this reason, we have to uh, understand the mechanisms by which prostate cancer cells become therapy resistant. We're trying to identify markers which would allow us to identify patients who would respond to a certain therapy and those patients who would not respond, kind of uh, personalized medicine. One of the most intriguing issues in cancer research is the use of appropriate cell culture models. Uh, which uh, reflect the characteristics of human tissue. And uh, so the main limitations of using two-dimensional cell cultures is that the cells lose relevant properties such as cell differentiation and polarity. So in one of our projects we uh, have established a three-dimensional technique. We use these three-dimensional organoids which we consider that they better represent human tissue to test, for instance, the efficacy of different drugs. For quite a long time, the success of immunotherapy was based on telling anecdotes, uh, stories from individual patients who had a favorable course. But now clinical trials have really documented and cemented the potential of immunotherapy. Uh, and for example, the, the renowned uh, Science Magazine has named cancer immunotherapy the breakthrough of the year 2013. So I think this is really promising. There is definitely a big difference between adult urology and pediatric urology. The environment is very important. You need to have a, a whole spectrum of logistics. You need specialized nurses. You need a specialized team in the operating room. You need a specialized team in the outpatient department. The facilities I have to focus on the special needs for children, that's very important and it's not possible that when you are dealing only with adult patients that you can do the other day uh, operations in, in the pediatric field. So that's the reason why within the European Union back in 2001 pediatric urology has become its own subspecialty that is officially recognized now. We are mainly dealing with congenital malformations. And uh, there is, in most of the cases, a need for surgical correction of this malformation. So the field of surgery is completely different from the field of surgery in adults. They are mainly dealing, for example, with cancers and, and, and things like that. So we are sort of reconstructive surgeons. We are trying to reconstruct nature as good as possible. Uh, in order to uh, avoid any subsequent uh, consequences due to the congenital malformation. So that's our main field doing reconstructive surgery in those kids. One of our focus for the last decades of research we are doing here is uh, the biology of the endocrine receptor. 
And the androgen receptor is the main target for treatment in prostate cancer because the prostate tumors are dependent on androgen hormones. And uh, we have uh, contributed to the understanding how uh, prostate tumors uh, become resistant to these kind of drugs that uh, uh, inhibit the androgen receptor. And based on this, uh, new strategies and new drugs have been developed, which have been introduced into treatment uh, recently. What's unique on this department is that we cover the entire spectrum of adult urology so that we can do uh, all the things of urology, for instance, andrology or urologic oncology, all in one department at one place. And this all in combination with high-quality labs uh, where the aim is translational research.